If you were planning your next vacation spot, the Arctic probably isn't on your list. No palm trees, no beach bars, and the only piña colada you'd get would be frozen solid before you took the first sip. But here's the twist. The Arctic is warming up so fast that one day, maybe it will feel like a beach minus the margaritas and plus some very confused polar bears. Scientists call this phenomenon Arctic amplification, which is just a fancy way of saying the Arctic is heating up at least two to four times faster than the global average. To put it in everyday terms, imagine you and three friends are out for a jog. Everyone's sweating, but the Arctic is that one guy sprinting ahead turning beet red while the rest of you are just starting to huff and puff. So why is this happening? Why does the top of the world act like it's in fast-forward mode when it comes to climate change? Let's start with the big one, the ice albedo feedback loop. Albedo is a sciencey word for how much sunlight a surface reflects, ice and snow. They're like giant mirrors bouncing most of the sunlight back into space. That's why, from space, the Arctic looks like someone spilled white paint all over the top of the globe. But here's the problem. When ice melts, it exposes darker surfaces underneath like ocean water or bare land. And those darker surfaces don't reflect light. They absorb it heating up faster. Warmer water and land melt more ice, which exposes more dark surfaces which causes more warming. It's a vicious cycle, kind of like a feedback loop on a microphone, but instead of an annoying screech in your ears, it's an overheating planet. Think of it this way. The Arctic used to wear a shiny white sun hat. Now it keeps taking the hat off and the sun's rays are frying its scalp. It's not just that the ice is melting, it's also that it's melting differently. Decades ago, much of the Arctic Ocean was covered by thick, multi-year sea ice. This ice would survive the summer melt and stick around year after year, acting like a reliable refrigerator. Nowadays, that refrigerator is breaking down. Multi-year ice is disappearing replaced by thinner seasonal ice that melts away every summer. Thinner ice means more open water in the summer, which again absorbs more heat. And because the ocean holds onto that heat when winter comes, the new ice forms later and thinner. It's like replacing a heavy winter coat with a flimsy windbreaker. You're just not going to stay warm. Now here's where things get really weird. The Arctic isn't just some isolated frozen cap. It actually plays a huge role in regulating the planet's weather. And as it warms, it's messing with the jet stream, that high altitude river of air that guides weather systems around the northern hemisphere. The jet stream works because of the temperature difference between the warm tropics and the cold Arctic. But if the Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet, that temperature difference shrinks. The jet stream slows down and starts to wobble like a drunk guy weaving across the sidewalk. Result, weather systems get stuck in place. That means longer heat waves, longer cold snaps, and longer storms. Ironically, a warming Arctic can actually make it snow more in places like the U.S. East Coast. So the next time you're shoveling snow in Boston while hearing about record heat in Alaska, you can thank the Arctic's wobbly jet stream. Beneath the Arctic surface lies permafrost frozen soil that has been locked up for thousands of years. Permafrost is like the world's freezer storing ancient plants, animals, and unfortunately a whole lot of carbon. When permafrost stays frozen, no problem. But as the Arctic heats up, it starts to thaw, releasing carbon dioxide and methane, both powerful greenhouse gases. Methane in particular is like carbon dioxide's rowdy cousin. It traps way more heat in the short term. So melting permafrost doesn't just reflect what's happening in the Arctic. It actually accelerates global global warming everywhere. Here's another player, the Arctic Ocean itself. Normally, the Arctic is covered in a cold, fresh layer of water from melting ice and river runoff, which helps insulate the ice above it. But warmer Atlantic waters are pushing farther north, a process scientists call Atlantification. Warmer, saltier water creeps into the Arctic, melting ice from below. Why it matters? Beyond the polar bears. Now maybe you're thinking, okay, the Arctic is in trouble. That's sad for the polar bears, but I live thousands of miles away. Why should I care? Here's why. What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Rising seas, melting glaciers and ice sheets in Greenland add water to the oceans raising sea levels worldwide. Your beachfront property in Miami, say goodbye. Even cities like New York are already planning for higher tides. Extreme weather. Remember that wobbly jet stream? It means storms that stall floods that last longer and heat waves that stick around. The Arctic is basically rewriting the weather forecast for half the planet. Global warming feedback. As ice melts and permafrost releases gases, it accelerates climate change everywhere. That means tougher farming conditions conditions, higher food prices, and more challenges for billions of people. So no, it's not just about sad polar bears floating on tiny ice rafts. It's about your grocery bill, your insurance premiums, and whether or not your basement floods next summer. What can we do about the Arctic heating up so fast? By now, you might be thinking, okay, the Arctic is melting, the jet stream's drunk, and permafrost is belching out greenhouse gases. This all sounds terrible. So what's the plan? Do we just buy beachfront property in Alaska and hope it turns into the new Florida? Not quite. Humanity isn't just sitting around watching icebergs collapse like it's 
some tragic reality show. We're experimenting with everything from tree planting to high-tech geoengineering. Some of it sounds brilliant, some of it sounds bonkers, but all of it shows just how seriously people are taking the Arctic's rapid warming. Let's start with the simplest solution. Stop pouring so many greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Every ton of carbon dioxide or methane we don't release slows down the feedback loops that are cooking the Arctic. That means switching from coal and oil to renewable energy sources like wind, solar, and hydro. It means making cars more efficient, redesigning cities to rely less on cars in the first place, and electrifying as much as possible. This isn't glamorous, no shiny gadgets, no sci-fi lasers, but it's the single most important thing we can do. If you want to stop your house from flooding, the first step isn't buying a snorkel, it's turning off the faucet. Of course, even if we cut emissions tomorrow, the Arctic would still warm for decades. That means we need to adapt. Farmers are already adjusting crops to handle weird weather patterns tied to the Arctic's changes. Cities are redesigning infrastructure to handle stronger floods and storms. Insurance companies. They're practically writing horror stories with their risk assessments. It's not just about technology, it's about changing habits. Using less energy, wasting less food, and rethinking how we build homes and communities all play a part. Small stuff doesn't sound dramatic, but add it up across billions of people and it's huge. Now for the crazy part, geoengineering. These are the moonshot experiments that sound like they belong in a Marvel movie but are actually on the table. Stratospheric aerosols. Spray tiny particles into the upper atmosphere to reflect sunlight back into space. Think of it as giving Earth a giant pair of sunglasses. The upside, it could cool things quickly. The downside, we have no clue what side effects it might trigger from droughts to messed up monsoon seasons. Marine cloud brightening ships could spray seawater into the air to make clouds whiter and more reflective. Same idea bounce more sunlight away before it cooks the Arctic. Artificial ice making. Believe it or not, some researchers are tinkering with the idea of giant pumps that spray seawater onto ice during the winter, thickening it so it lasts longer into the summer. It's the climate equivalent of putting more ice cubes in your drink when it's melting too fast. These ideas are controversial. They might buy us time, but they don't solve the root problem of greenhouse gases. Still, the fact that people are even talking about them shows how desperate things are getting. One way to look at this is to see the Arctic not just as a victim, but as an alarm system. The fact that it's heating up so much faster is a warning for the rest of the planet. It's like your smoke detector going off in the kitchen. You can ignore it for a while, but eventually the whole house will be filled with smoke. And here's the kicker. Some scientists argue that if we can figure out how to stabilize the Arctic, it could help stabilize the global climate system as a whole. The Arctic is that important. Now it's tempting to dismiss some of these solutions as far-fetched, but we've already seen proof that action works. Remember the ozone hole over Antarctica? Back in the 80s, scientists discovered that certain chemicals in spray cans and refrigerators were destroying the ozone layer. Governments came together, banned those chemicals, and today the ozone layer is healing. If we can fix that, we can make progress on the Arctic too. It won't be easy because carbon dioxide is a much bigger beast than CFCs ever were, but the point is coordinated global action isn't impossible. Let's make this personal for a second. The Arctic might feel like another planet, but the consequences of its warming land right in our backyards. Your grocery bill goes up when weird weather wrecks crops. Your insurance premium skyrockets when your city gets hit by once-in-a-century floods now happening every decade. Your vacations might get canceled because wildfire smoke fills the skies for weeks. It all ties back in one way or another to the Arctic heating up and disrupting Earth's climate systems. So the next time you see a headline about record heat in Alaska or collapsing ice shelves in Greenland, don't think of it as distant news. Think of it as the earth tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey buddy, the freezer's broken. Better fix it before the whole house warms up.